I'm going to give you a, a thought question here, just to show you how crazy things are when we get into, into the phaser domain. I'm going to give you a short circuit fragment. It's going to have an arbitrary inductor L, and it's going to have an arbitrary capacitor C. And my question is, is there any frequency? We're going to think about this as a sinusoidal steady state problem. We've got some sort of, of circuit out here, and it's, it's driven by a sinusoid. So is there any frequency at which the circuit fragment looks like a wire? And the part B is, is there any frequency at which the circuit fragment looks like an open? And if so, at what frequencies? Grant, what would be your first step? And Ruben, you're um, next. Would it be the same thing as last time? You just convert to phasers if you have a certain number? That's exactly it. So let's do that. We don't know what frequency it is, and we don't know what L is. So the best we can write is J omega L. And same thing for the capacitors. We've got no idea what that capacitance is. We don't know what the frequency is. So the best we can write is one over J omega C. And then Ruben, where do we go next? For it to be a wire, the easiest thing would be to make the inductor. I just figured the easy, it would be to make the inductor a wire, just not one over zero. So, and to make okay. that zero, um, the L probably is zero. So, but any, any number in there has to be zero. So to make it equal zero, what we have is a circuit fragment that looks like a short. Mm -hmm. And what does the capacitor look like at zero frequency? Uh, I guess an open, like That's undefined. Right. Yeah. It's, it wouldn't be undefined. It's an open. It's, it's an oh, infinite. Right. infinity. And so therefore, yeah. that, looks like, that looks like your wire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any other frequencies at which it looks like a, uh, a short? Oh, if you make... If you made the capacitor into zero, that's it. I'm making omega like infinity, that's very it. large. That's it. And then you've got an open for the inductor, but you've got a short for the capacitor. And so that also equals a, a short. All right. So already this is a really unusual circuit, right? It, it's, it's taken to either extreme of the frequency, it's going to look like a short. Um, Tim. How about part B? So would you kind of do the same thing for with the omega L and the and then the capacitor? So to try and make the, the circuit look like an open, um, it would be kind of the same thing, right? Well, the problem is when you make one element, what Ruben just said is when you make one look like an open, the others are short. And when you make the other look like an open, the other ones are short. So either way, you've got a short in parallel, which shorts out the whole thing, which looks <laughs> like a short. <laughs> so you're trying to make um, both of the inductor and the capacitor both open? Well, what we're trying to make is that the difference between these two circles look like an open. There's no way we can make that capacitor and the, and the inductor both look like opens because they occur at opposite frequencies. So we can't make them both look like opens together. So we have to use a completely different method. Ruben was taking a look at it from DC steady state, but now I'm asking you to take a look at it from AC phasers. This capacitor and this inductor, they're, are they in series or, or parallel? Parallel. Parallel. So you could say that the overall impedance of our whole circuit fragment is going to be the impedance of the inductor in parallel with the impedance of the capacitor. And what's the equation for that? What's the equation for two things in, in parallel? Um, added and then beneath it, they're multiplied. Uh, the other way, product over sum. Oh, so, yeah, that's gonna, right. okay. so we'll multiply them and then we'll add them. And you know that the secret, algebraic secret, for whenever you've got these uh, compound fraction, compound fractions, or when you've got fractions made up of fractions, is you multiply them by the denominator. So we're going to multiply this whole thing by J omega C over J omega C. And that way, <clears throat> you can always multiply anything by one. It doesn't change it. But now we get rid of those. Now we get rid of that denominator. So J omega C over J omega C just cancels out and our numerator is now just J omega L. 
And when we multiply this by J omega C, we get J squared omega squared LC plus, and the J omega C is canceled and we just get one. So that trick about multiplying when we see compound fractions, multiplying by the denominators is a really good trick to get out of problems with algebra. Okay, so now I'm just gonna write this again, J omega L on top. And <clears throat> somebody tell me, what is J squared equal to? Um, Liam? That's something I've written down somewhere in my notes, but I don't. Okay, tell me what J is, Liam. What is J, J defined to be? Root and negative one. That's right. So now that if you know that J is, is the square root of negative one, what would J squared be? Oh, oh, just, yeah, that'd just be negative one. Okay. Yeah, that's all. So when you see yeah. J squared, just know the two key things that are tricky with, with J's is J squared is negative one, and the other is one over J is equal to negative J. Those are the two, two things you should just keep in mind. So now let's go back to here. So I'm gonna reverse the direction and J squared is negative one, so that's minus omega C LC. All right, now, continuing on this problem on the right, if we want the impedance of this to go to infinity, um, KC, what can you tell me about the denominator? What will the denominator be if we want, if we want the impedance to go to infinity? If we, if we want this whole thing to go up to infinity, do we want the denominator to be big or small? Small. Small. We want it to be zero. We're going to solve for when this denominator is equal to zero, which is the same thing as saying, when does, the, when does one equal omega squared times LC? And since we're running out of time, I'll solve it for you. Omega squared is equal to one over LC. So therefore, omega equals one over the square root of LC. You've already seen this before in our work with those plug and chuck equations for second order circuits. But now we've got our two answers to our questions that when omega is zero or infinity, this thing looks like a short. And when omega is equal to one over the square root of LC, weirdly, this thing looks like an open. And what's happening there is that our energy is being sloshed back and forth between the inductor and the capacitor and all the currents going back and forth between here. And so none of it can go through. 